Welcome to Electrum Online. Let's review Coulomb's Law through some examples, some applications. And one of the applications is as follows. Let's say we have two charges, a positive charge of 6 microcoulombs, a negative charge of minus 10 microcoulombs, 2 meters apart. And where should we put a third charge of positive 8 microcoulombs on the line connecting the two so that the net force on that third charge equals zero? So even though it's kind of a unique example, it follows kind of the pattern of how we should go about solving these types of problems. What you're going to do is you're going to imagine you can either put the charge in between, on the left, or on the right. And then in each case, what will, what will be the net force? Will it be positive, negative, or could it be zero? So that's the concept. And for that, we always want to draw the vectors, the force vectors indicating what the forces will look like. So let's imagine that we put the charge in between. So let's say the, Q, the Q3 charge is going to be over here. Notice that it's a positive charge. And so we're going to draw force vectors. The first vector, based upon the force due to this charge, will be a force of repulsion. Positive charges repel each other, so there will be a force to the right due to this charge. And then, because there is a negative charge over here, there will be a force of attraction, so the second force will also be to the right. So notice that both forces caused by the other two charges will be to the right, so there's no way this ever could add up to zero. So that's not the place where you want them or you want, where you want the third charge. So then let's try over on this side. So let's put it over here. And uh, again, it's a positive 8 microcoulombs. And so based upon this positive charge being here, this charge is going to feel a force of attraction. But since that charge is far away and it's relatively smaller than this charge, the absolute value of it at least, that would seem that the force towards the left would be rather small between those two charges. But then, here we see a force of, ooh, 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 let me go back, uh, back up, back up, that's wrong. Uh, okay, that was wrong, okay. So if we now place that, that third charge to the right, notice that between these two charges there will be a far force of repulsion, so the force over here will be to the right, but it'll be a small force because they're far apart and this charge is smaller in magnitude than this charge. On the other hand, there'll be a force of attraction between these two and you can see then that there'll be a large force in this direction because it's a large negative charge and they're very close together. So therefore, you can see that this force will always be larger than this force so they will never be able to add up to zero. So finally, let's try on the left side. What happens if we place the force of the charge over here? Again, that's a positive charge, and notice that, first of all, they will repel each other because they're both positive, so it'll be a force pointing to the left. And then these two will attract each other, so then there'll be a force to the right. But since this charge is larger than this charge, even though you're farther away, there would be a possibility, perhaps, that the magnitude of this force can be equal to the magnitude of this force because even though they're closer together, this is a smaller charge and here they're farther apart, but it's a bigger charge. So it could be that they can cancel out and the net force would be zero. So that would be the preferable place. This will not work and this will not work, but this may work. So now let's try to figure it out. So the next step is once you determine where the charge should be in what region, now we need to find the location where the net force will be zero. And so you can see that we have two forces in opposite directions, so we still want, we simply want the magnitudes to be the same. And to do that, we need to imagine that the distance between here, these two, let's call it x because it's unknown. We're trying to figure out what the value of x is so that we find the correct location. And so what we can say is that the force between Three, this is charge 3, let's call this Q1, let's call this Q2, let's call this Q3. And so the one between 3 and 1 should equal the magnitude of the force between 3 and 2. Notice that we don't care about the negative sign because we only want the magnitude of the force and magnitudes will always be positive. So using Coulomb's law, that will be K times Q3 times Q1, the absolute value of those, divided by the distance between them, so let's call it 
distance between 3 and 1 squared, and that must equal k times q3 times q2 divided by the distance between 3 and 2 squared. Well, first of all, they both have a k that cancels out. Now we can plug in the values. We don't need to put the microcoulombs. In other words, we don't need to put 10 to the minus 6 because the numbers themselves will be good enough. So Q3, that was 8 microcoulombs, times Q1, which is 6 microcoulombs, divided by the distance between 3 and 1, that would be x, and we have to square that, x squared. That must equal charge 3, which is 8 microcoulombs, Charge 2, which is 10 microcoulombs. Again, we don't care if it's negative. We're just looking for the magnitude. And we divide that by the distance, which would be x plus 2 quantity squared. And all we have to do is solve this equation for x. All right? So we still have a little algebra to do. We have 8 times 6, which 6 times 8, which is 48, times x plus 2 squared. And by the way, notice that they both have a Q3, so that cancels out. Might as well make it simple. So in that case, we don't have a 48 there, we simply have a 6 there. And on the right side, this will be 10 times x squared. Multiplying this out, we get 6 times x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 10x squared. And here we have a little kitty cat visiting us. Hey kitty, come on, come on here. Oh, well, the kitty doesn't want to come visit you guys. A little shy. All right, we'll just let the cat do what it wants to do. All right, there we go. So, continue on. So here we have 20, oh, well, not 24x. I'm getting ahead of myself. So here we have 6x squared plus 24x plus 24 is equal to 10x squared. And then coming up here to finish up. Moving everything over to one side, so we have 0 is equal to 10 minus 6, which is 4x squared minus 24x minus 24. And right away we can see there's a common factor of 4, so that means that 0 equals x squared minus 6x minus 6. And then using the quadratic formula, we can say that uh, negative b, which is 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared, which is 36, minus 4ac, but we have a minus there, so it becomes plus. 4 times 6, which is 24, all divided by 2a, which is 2. So we have 6 plus or minus the square root of 60 divided by 2. So this is 6 plus or minus. And at that point, I need a calculator because I don't know what the square root of 60 is offhand. Uh, so we get 7.746. All right. So that is plus or minus. 7.746 divided by 2. And then it's obvious that the negative cannot be part of the solution because it cannot be a negative value for x, so it will be positive. So this is equal to 13.746 divided by 2. So plus 6 plus 6 divided by 2 equals, and oh, that didn't work, 13.746 uh, divided by 2 is 6.873. 6.873, and of course that would be in terms of meters. And so if you place Q3, 6.873 meters to the left, and let's see here, 14, 6, 13, 7, 4, yeah, that's about right, okay? Then um, that means that the net force on Q3 will be equal to zero, and that is how it's done.